Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray. And today I'm joined by my fabulous, fantastic co-hosts, Ricardo Martinez and Jerry. That's right, boys and girls. He's back to ask the awkward questions that me and Ricardo don't want to ask. Um, and today we are interviewing from Bitcoin startup Bitkippy. I think that's how you say it. Bitkippy, Bitkippy. Yeah, Bitkippy, uh, correct. Bitkippy. Uh, Mr. Enrico Zolocci. I think I said that correctly. Correct. Probably not. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Nailed it. Two in a row. Uh, so yeah, how are you doing today, Enrico? I'm doing well. Thanks a lot for having me and uh, hello, everyone. Nice. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Uh, and I guess I'll, I'll kick off the conversation by asking you a question, surprisingly enough. Uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll go back to the, the very beginning, as I like to do. Um, so obviously, you're working on Bitkippy at the moment, and we'll talk about that, I imagine, very shortly. Um, but before then, um, what is your kind of Bitcoin story? Because obviously, it's a Bitcoin-based company. Uh, what were yes. you doing before it? How did you discover it? How how's it all developed kind of from from there? What's the, what's your so, past? Yeah, absolutely. So look, it's uh, super simple. I mean, uh, we're just uh, two very uh, simple guys, and uh, and uh, we we got uh, very passionate about uh, Bitcoin and the implication that uh, the technology has. And you know, I mean, uh, we are two at the moment. So myself and uh, the co- uh, my, uh, my co-founder uh, Alessandro, who simply one summer, I think, uh, three years ago, two years, uh, a little bit more than two years ago, contacted me and said, you know, uh, it's uh, every time my father wants to buy uh, Bitcoin, it's very complex, and uh, you know, uh, I don't, uh, I, I, I really, I really cannot uh, imagine that there's no, you know, simple. Uh, non-custodial Bitcoin only way to you know to, to buy and uh, for people that are just simply passionate and they want to stack uh, uh, stack value in this way. So um, that's uh, that's when we started and we said okay we have, we have a problem out there so let's try to to solve it. Uh, our background, uh, as you asked uh, about uh, about the background, I mean we were both worked and we met actually working for uh, a, you know IT consulting company. So basically, we are in the technology industry, and uh, and yeah, I mean, we 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 kicked it off, and uh, and a few years later, let's say, uh, we are here in this uh, in this uh, in this adventure. Gotcha, cool. Okay, so you kind of identified, uh, you guys were IT guys, identified a problem that yourselves yeah. and I think it's your your, your co-founder's father had, and then exactly. just thought, let's do it, let's uh, let's build that kind of. Yeah. Is it something that you did on the side whilst you're working at first? On the side. Uh, yes, right. Yes, on the side, gotcha. totally on the side. It was a project, and that's also why it took us. Uh, we ob- honestly, we would have loved, you know, uh, for it to take uh, less time to go to go to market, if you want to say it this way, uh, but. Uh, but uh, it took some time because we really did that uh, in uh, our free time. So it has been at the moment, and that's a little bit the beauty of it, is just me and my co-founder, and, it's, and it has been only our time and our investment. So we are not, you know, we are fully owning the company and uh, we have not, uh, you know, we have not so far uh, agreed to any external investor. So we are, we are working on our own, yes, in our free time, yeah. Enrico? You yes. guys are based in Switzerland, correct? Correct. That's correct. Accurate. Are yes. you guys in, in the uh, Crypto Valley? Uh, depends. What do you define Crypto Valley in Switzerland? Uh, <laughs> With, Zug? Uh, like I've always heard that no, Zug is like no, the headquarters. Okay. So yeah, yes okay. and no. I mean, uh, that, on that I is slightly. I would I would uh, bring a different perspective. So I don't know if in Zug they call themselves the Crypto Valley, but actually there are several places in Switzerland where uh, a lot of startups in the Bitcoin space develop. You know, and uh, one of them, it's uh, Zoo probably uh, for many different reasons. And then there's another one, which is a very big community is in Neuchâtel, where we are based. And then there, which is another canton, basically. And then there is a, another strong community in Zurich, actually, where you have a lot of other startup types. Uh, or, you know, it's so, so if, if Crypto Valley is Zug, no, we're not in the Crypto Valley, but there, are, there is a strong ecosystem of, uh, of uh, Bitcoin startups in Neuchâtel and in Zurich as well. I guess like, because you guys are based, uh, yeah, in, in Swiss, and like, is, is that where the company is actually registered or do you guys go for like the whole Liechtenstein? That's it, Liechtenstein? No, 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 no it's like, uh, so, 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 let me clarify this point. Very good question. So, 
uh, both myself and Alessandro, we are living in Switzerland for the past uh, 12 years, even though we are both Italian, okay? So, so that's, that's an important point. We, we have not uh, located the company in Switzerland because of any, you know, specific uh, uh, strange reason. It's just we were here and we created the company here. So it's an Italian, I mean, we are both Italian nationality, but, but we are living in Switzerland since ever. So we just built it where we were. Uh, yeah, oh, to reply to a question. And yes, it's true that, because I think you have asked about Liechtenstein. So uh, it is true that uh, one of the broker that we leverage, that they are, uh, they use a, um, a bank that is in Liechtenstein. Um, but they also use a bank that is in Switzerland. They have actual, actually multiple banks they rely on uh, uh, to, to receive the, the funds. Gotcha. But, but you guys, your company, like BitGippy itself, is registered mm -hmm. in Switzerland. Correct. It's registered in Switzerland, in the canton of Neuchâtel, to be precise. And the actual, let's say, legal name of the, the legal entity is called Keepy Technologies. But that's just, uh, you know, the company that owns BitGippy as, mm -hmm. as, a, as a product. Because why that? Because we don't want to limit ourselves to the type of services and products that we want to that we want to build. So, but but that's for sure one, and it's the only one for the moment in our our of course beloved uh, Bitkeeping. So yes, we are incorporated in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. Confirmed. Uh, pardon my ignorance, but w what does Kipi mean? Uh, Kipi means uh, revolution in Hawaiian. <laughs> it's a it's a, it's a, it's a long story. We were maybe too drunk when we created the name. <laughs> no, but it's a it's a it's a long story. But yes, we we thought you know uh, Bitcoin revolution, and that we were thinking about it. And uh, a friend of uh, different this friend of mine like uh, why? So we said okay, let's look it up. I mean, very very simple, stupid story. Sorry, <laughs> we don't have like a beautiful story behind our names. I guess so. Bitkeepy, like to talk about what it is, especially for people listening. Um, yeah. And my understanding of, of the application uh, is it's mobile application. Uh, it's very simple, straightforward, automated buys, uh, straight to self custody of Bitcoin only. I think 10 euro minimum, uh, I believe. Um, and so, like, <clears throat> essentially, what, it, what it's done beautifully is like, hey, here's an issue. Uh, here's the solution. We're not going to just bedazzle you with tons of shit. It's like, exactly. this is the solution. Exactly. It's simple. That's the sort of thing I love. Like I uh, yeah. big into like having like that kind of, because obviously otherwise you can really obfuscate things and get really complex and, and customers yeah. don't know this way. It's like, I want this. I get this. Um, yes. Are you guys like Europe, Europe based, obviously you can serve Europe. Does that include the UK have interest? Uh the list of available, the list where BitKeepy as a service is available is out there and on our website. It does not include UK as a matter of fact. I, I should say no is the best answer because of course you could use BitKeepy like uh, uh, from the UK, but uh, for instance, we don't support uh, uh, the, the currency and uh, also most of the banks over there we cannot serve as well. So, uh, so the answer is no, but we're working on it and we'll expand the service, of course, as we, as we continue working on it. So the answer is no for the moment. That's the, yeah, fair. I mean, not surprised really. Sorry, Jerry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I saw on your website that you said no verification needed, which is no. It, to me personally, for most people who are into crypto, it sounds like a buzzword. You don't know, no KYC, it's, it's very yeah. dreamy, yeah. you know. So how does that work? Especially, you know, once, once you consider yes. that, you know, regulations in, you know, the West and Europe specifically are very yeah. similar. So that's the question that, uh, that's the, the question that everyone uh, wants to know about. So uh, first of all, um, uh, it's important to know a couple of things. So um, we, as you said, we wanted to keep it very simple, right? So we wanted to say, okay, we have this problem. We create a service and that's it. We, we are no you know, financial advisor, we are no uh, investor consultants, we are not a bank, we are not a financial intermediary, we are just a technology service that, allow, that gives you access to this type of uh, uh, you know, way of, of storing value. And in doing that, so in doing that, we have to do that, uh, being an official legal entity in Switzerland, fully respecting the regulation. So to reply to your question, the point is the following, how does it work? In Switzerland, there is a fundamentally favorable context for uh, Bitcoin. And uh, Swiss authorities, they, they do not require a heavy weight uh, K 
KYC process, you know, uh, in order for you to perform transactions up until as a threshold. This threshold today, uh, bold, <laughs> bold today, is 900 uh, euro per day, per period of 20, oh, 24 hours, or uh, one, or of course, Andre, uh, I mean, the equivalent in, uh, in Swiss francs. Okay, um, so here, so which is 1,000 Swiss francs to be precise over a period of 24 hours. So today, the regulator does not require an heavy uh, KYC process for that. Uh, they do not require you to scan, you know, your identity uh, documents uh, nor any other information. So, so that's why we can operate without uh, KYC uh, in uh, in Switzerland. So the assumption is that um, to the regulators that your customers are not going to go above the ex above the, the, one out, the threshold. Yes. So is 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 that threshold applicable on the app on your app or is just you know is it applicable for customers on your app or it's just you know something that we know that you know or you're just assuming customers won't since it's a dca you know app mm -hmm. you know customers are yes. comfortable with just purchasing hundred dollars two hundred dollars you know yes. maximum in a day what if a customer you know, wanted to go beyond that exactly so if a customer wants to go beyond that bitkp would suggest uh, other uh, very uh, valuable partners or services but we will not do that and also yes the threshold is enforced in the application. If you try to purchase more, it's not uh, gonna work. It's just, it's enforced in the application and uh, in the old chain that is behind the application. So everything that is the processes that, uh, that we have to follow. So, so it will not be possible. So we need uh, to suggest, an, of course, I have to elaborate a little bit more on this because this is very interesting. Of course, uh, this, I mean, is probably the best proof that uh, we are in there for the love of the technology and, and for opening up this technology to everyone. Because, of course, not accepting uh, higher amounts uh, makes our fees uh, in uh, absolute value. Uh, of course, much uh, much smaller than potential. I mean, because potentially, if you catch uh, an hundred k uh, transaction, of course, the fee is uh, what you could do with. Uh, of course, I don't know hundred users uh, with much smaller amount, right? Uh, with one k each. But the thing is, but the thing is, we are not there for. We are really not there for the moment for the for the for the fees. We are there to provide this service and to open up this technology to the public. That's the really the mission of the of the company. Is BitKeepy just to purchase Bitcoin, or can you also sell your Bitcoin back for Swiss francs? I love this question. So a lot of our users asked us, "So where is the sell button?" <laughs> but uh, um, uh, and I have to be honest, I'll give you a little bit of a sneak peek here. In the very first version that we didn't publish, we had the sell button, so we had the sell feature, but we removed it. Uh, in the first version of the application is not excluded we are going to bring it back but at the moment we wanted to focus only on uh, dca so only on ability to purchase and not uh, ability to sell there are many platforms that can allow you i mean you can simply you know you could simply transfer your bitcoin everywhere else and sell uh, not a problem for us but that's not something we cover at the moment why, why, why is that? Why is the rationale behind removing removing the sell button? You know, why? <laughs> why no, that? no, it's just because no, it's a matter of prioritization. To be honest, so it's really a matter of prioritization. We we thought we don't think our uh, you know average user is going to be interested in selling. They're going to be interested in stacking, so they're going to be interested in buying. But as as I just said, uh, it's true that many users are asking, and we are really strongly considering uh, putting it back in a in the next release. Absolutely, yeah. No, no, you're right. I mean, it's a good point. Maybe under we have under as I said at the beginning, we are in this as passionate individuals, not as professional. Maybe we should have. Maybe this is a mistake. Actually, we should have done it differently from the start. <laughs> I think uh, I think doing what you've done isn't like the end of the world, right? Like you you focused in on a specific niche or a group of people yeah. who wants to do one specific thing, and then you can obviously expand from there. I, I don't think it's unsensible to like expand your offering in that in that way uh, to make sure that you can deal with the the demand um, and the, and scale as well with what you have. I suppose um, question I've got is like so for example like the FATF that I think I think they they want like is I think it's any any more than five thousand. 
dollars, I think it is, on like any one user they want. And there's all these different like um, mm-hmm. I, I might be I might be outdated here, but there's all these different regulations around when they want people to be reported and things like that. Now, yeah. obviously, as you said, not a concern for you guys at the moment, based in Switzerland. Um, should the regulations change uh, and they do require more enhanced KYC for customers? If I was in Europe, et cetera, and I could use your service to just, it's super easy, super simple, straight to my own custody, I wouldn't really give a crap, to be frank, if I had to do KYC. I mean, it would be a bit of a shame, but whatever. But I'm sure yeah. there's some customers who uh, would be vehemently against it. Um, I guess, like, what... Because obviously at the moment you don't do any KYC because it's the vision is it's a no KYC option and it, and it's smooth mm-hmm. and easy and simple. Uh, it, it, would you guys, I'm assuming you wouldn't just give up on the dream, right? Like, would you guys then look to do the it's, KYC yeah, yeah. at that point? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Over there, you have tapped into the one of the most, uh, I would say, strategic questions that are behind our our company. And uh, to be totally honest and transparent with you, is a question that we are asking ourselves as well. I, I mean, would we for sure exclude to perform KYC in the future if the regulation becomes more stringent? I don't know. To be honest, I don't think we would totally exclude it because there is a set of users that would use the service with KYC just because it's easier, just because it's simpler, and just because it's more immediate and pay attention to the needs of the of the of the user. But but uh, at the same time, I mean. As long as the regulation permits, even for very small amount, we would not require the, the, the KYC. Yes, I mean, and you, you know, in Switzerland, we already kind of, uh, um, can, we can already kind of anticipate that regulation will in the future probably reduce the threshold because it, all in all, if you think about it, the threshold is pretty high. I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm no one to judge on any one personal uh, finances, but uh, in my world, let's say uh, 900 euro per 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 day are are I <laughs> in my world. Let's say. No, I agree. I agree, and I think even for someone who's wealthy, knowing it's KYC free, I mean, even still, that's that's a good amount. Like you can mm-hmm. yeah, 900 euros a day is pretty yeah. pretty substantial. I'd say it's pretty substantial. Um, yes. Yeah, I think it's yeah. pretty good going flexible. Um, Anyhow, I guess I mean, quite... uh, not excluding, but but yeah, it's a strategic question we need to ask ourselves in the in the very short future. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. No, because I, I know that obviously regulations are a, always a risk for any crypto company, and they're always developing pretty fast, especially yeah. now. Um, yeah. Now more eyes are on Bitcoin, I suppose. Um, so what you guys have is obviously this 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 software, this application. Uh, yes. user what makes automated purchases they provide euros into uh, bank accounts set up by you guys i'm imagining or or, or straight to your so provider bank accounts i'm oh, sorry yeah. um, go ahead no no we we to reply we we do use a, a broker so basically mm-hmm. it is uh, so we provide as i said the technology the solution and uh, you know, we allow this uh, to perform this, those purchases, and uh, uh, we rely on a broker to, of course, provide us the the back end. I would say the back end uh, uh, services. Uh, right. I think another thing that is important to know it's uh, we yeah we own absolutely the technology, but as I said, we are no financial uh, institution, so we do not uh, you know uh, provide any uh, financial advisory or anything like that. So so just to make sure I got it right, so obviously you guys have the software um, that that basically sits on top of the the, the broker. Uh, and yes. my understanding, they would probably use like various liquidity providers one or two or something like that maybe more to obtain the best pricing at any time or they have a float or something exactly. that they use to get their service going okay so there's obviously the there's 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 whatever charge there is for the broker and then there's obviously the small charge for using your service because it's automated exactly. and simple and clean okay that makes sense exactly. like, that's exactly the flow exactly is the big hippie app like a wallet like you custody it within the app or do you have integrations with like hardware wallets like ledger or trezor a bit kippy it's not uh, conceived to be uh, a wallet application, but of course we needed a wallet because when you enter, let's say, the user experience of the application, you have two possible uh, you have two possible ways, right? You can buy Bitcoin on an existing wallet, or you can buy Bitcoin in a wallet that you can create with the application. Okay, so to reply to your question, yes, there is also the the pool end to end, you know, wallet uh, uh, feature within the application, but you can also purchase directly on external wallet. You can, you know, you can import an existing one. I mean, it's it's totally it's totally up to you. But 
in order it's more in order to provide the service of purchasing Bitcoin, we had to create the almost the almost the full fledged wallet uh, uh, within the application. Yes, it's interesting what you guys have done. Like I like that you have essentially like really because I think a lot of a lot of um, people when they have an idea they'll create they'll have this idea they'll create like a solution for it, um, but they'll kind of often muddy the waters and and kind of say I, I could imagine that because what you guys have done, you've created the, the, the software, the technology, and instead of being like, hey, let's be our own brokerage and plug directly into liquidity providers and deal with that side of things, which from my own personal experience, I can tell you is pretty damn difficult to do. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's a long, is a, is a full-time job for many people. Um, mm. Then you've literally just gone, you know, we'll, we'll, our service itself is worth someone paying that slight extra for, we'll, we'll, we'll literally just partner up with brokerage or brokerages or whatever. Um, so I think it's pretty smart the way the way you've done things, to be honest. And then to then set, focus in on just like one thing um, that really is, you know, the thing uh, that you think your customers want, which clearly they do, which is automated buys. I suppose my mm. question here that coming out of this is what's your kind of, what would you say is your guys' like end vision or goal? Like, uh, because, you know, I imagine you've got yes. ideas, yes, right, we, in your head. Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, so to be totally... Uh, uh, transparent with you. I mean, we are a lot about uh, full transparency. We are no, not ashamed of our ideas. Our end goal is really to provide uh, um, a mass uh, service for, you know, stacking uh, Bitcoin. And to be honest, when we created the startup at the start, you know, at the very start, our target was, um, and it still is very much, a user that is not at all advanced on the technology. You know, it can be the man of the street. I mean, in our understanding, we thought, okay, why for people that are not, uh, that have not spent, uh, you know, a lot of time discovering these topics, you know, understanding what Bitcoin is, why it has to be so difficult? Because maybe there are people, <laughs> at least this is what we believe, that just want to adopt the technology and the barrier, I call it the barrier to the entry of, you know, understanding the technology so high. So the, I would say the ultimate mission of BitKeep is to bring this, you know, barrier at entry, uh, to bring it down, to bring it, uh, very, to, in fact, one of the things that we are not good at, that, but that we thought we would do is to provide also educational content. We worked, We wanted to, Host, but we haven't done yet. We wanted to provide educational content, and that, and that is why um, uh, you know we are so glad when we receive this type of invitation because because you guys, are, you know, I mean, there's no better way than openly speak about 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 these topics uh, to really make them accessible to the many. So that's really the, the ultimate vision. Uh, we do not have like any specific uh, uh, financial service uh, direction. I mean. We, of course, it would be more interesting for us to become our own broker. That's another thing that we are thinking about, because, of course, if we become our own broker, we can make the service much more um, sharp, you know, uh, even competitive. Uh, but at the moment, the main vision still is uh, to bring this barrier down and allow everyone uh, allow their, fin their, their, let's say, uh, ability to stack, uh, to stack uh, uh, Bitcoin on their own. So that's that's really the vision. Beginner friendly, I, I suppose, and 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 that itself is good anyway. Like I can tell you right now, being dead certain, honestly, like if this was something that was in the UK, and again, you've got this like no KYC up to whatever value, mm -hmm. I genuinely would start probably using it next week because it's just that's all. <laughs> that's I, all cool. I want is like I can't be asked with like like my Binance, my Coinbase, or whoever. Yeah. Like it's just easy. If I had just an app where literally I just like it's very simple. I just go, I want to buy this much on these days or whatever and then just think you know, where you go exactly. and it goes straight into my uh my wallet then that uh, you've won me over like hands down basically so that's my thoughts on it we'll do our uh, best to be in as many countries as we can of course <laughs> yeah gotcha no that's uh, fine yeah jerry go ahead sorry mate uh do you believe in the free market do i believe that that uh question that's uh, maybe a difficult question what, what can you can you can you be more specific do you believe, you know, letting people, you know, do let the market basically regulate itself, you know, let people do what they want with their money? That is that's how I understand. Mm. If I, I asked this, I asked this because uh, on your website you say Bitcoin only. So, for instance, you have let's say you have a bunch of customers saying, "Hey, I want to dabble into some, you know, shit coins and you know, do some Ethereum or awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so 
and would you let them? I know you have, you focus on Bitcoin only, but would you give them the the choice to let them make their own financial financial decisions while you just let them use your tools? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, in terms of uh, uh, Bitcoin only versus uh, other, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies. I mean, uh, as long as I'm part of the company, the company will be Bitcoin only. Just because, uh, I mean, at least, so I, I'm, I, I'm not gonna. I mean, the, the, in the vision, the, in the vision, there's no opening up to other type of cryptocurrencies today. Uh, but uh, I mean, uh, uh, that's as long as me is part, as I am part of the guys, I'm there. Um, but why? Because I think, you know, the message of uh, Bitcoin is so much, I would say, uh, diluted by all the noise that is around everything else. And yeah, I'm not being a, too much of a really maximalist here, but it's really a matter of saying, you know, let's focus on one thing, let's do it right. Let's not get, you know, uh, creative also we do not have the internal resources to take care of everything so it's not really um it's a it's a it's an in principle choice but it's also uh, a, a pragmatic choice you know no, so so that's the answer to that question in terms of the free market you know uh, if if i had the answer to this question i mean i would not keep uh, uh, studying all the things that i'm studying i mean uh, but yes generally speaking i think uh, uh, full self regulation of the market is uh, is 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 has a lot of advantages but also there are some things that uh, unfortunately i have not been able to find an answer to in in a fully self uh, uh, in a fully autonomous and self-regulated market, so it's a very big, uh, big debate. I mean, <laughs> we, I, I don't, I don't have a clear answer to be honest. Yes, I prefer to say, I prefer to say this way. But on the other cryptos, yes, I do have. We are Bitcoin only, and we we'll stay Bitcoin only until I'm there. Uh, what about Lightning support? Is it just on chain, or are you guys planning on adding Lightning support at some Yeah, time? difficult and very important question. If we were able, I mean, that's a huge potential for us and that's something we want to work on uh, without any doubt but it does require uh, an effort a very big one it requires a deeper re-architecturing and restructuring of our solution um, technically i mean development wise uh, and at the moment uh, i don't think we have a lot of resources to to achieve that but it's definitely something we would be looking into um today not available today on chain only something which um i guess comes to mind because of uh again my own experiences uh have you guys had to deal with uh i'd be interested to know and obviously you don't have to tell me um mm -hmm. but have you guys had to deal with any kind of scammers or anything so far right like have you had any or, or have you or, and and or have you had any requests from any uh government bodies or anyone like that actually saying hey like you know this this dodgy ass person potentially tried to use your services or has used your services like have you had any anyone looking at you like that like under a, a microscope yeah, yeah so, or anything? so these are two questions the same one so uh, uh, uh scammers and uh is one thing in let's say illegal or or non-compliant activities is another thing so about the scammers so yes a lot and to be honest it is so annoying that uh, you know again this is noise that is diluting the potential of the bitcoin technology it's awful basically i mean it's really a pain because then it creates also within the different communities a lot of skepticism a lot of you know a lot of uh, diffidence ah, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna and and that's so bad for the technology and so i i, I we are really like uh, very much uh, uh, aware of uh, a scammer and we make a lot of effort to to keep them away from our activities in terms of illegal and uh, let's say non-compliant of course we cannot discuss any uh, specific detail but of course this situation occur and we take them very 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 seriously first of all we have a there's a legal obligation that if we find anything suspicious that we need to you know we need to uh, to deal with it uh, according to the to you know to the law um that's 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 the reality i mean uh, that's the reality but to be honest we haven't had that many situations where we had uh, you know we really had to to intervene and also to be totally transparent with you uh, it is a lot a work that is done on the broker side because again we are not a financial institution so so that due diligence is a lot done on the on the broker side so all in all some cases 
but so far so good on the side of the non-compliance and, and uh, illegal activity. On the side of Scammer, unfortunately, it's been a lot, a lot. <laughs> I, I I expected that again. From, uh, not does not yeah. surprise me from uh, what yeah. I've seen in, in the past. Uh, I suppose obviously Same. when it when it comes to things like uh, customer support, I assume you guys run your customer support, and then obviously if the issue is relating to your side of things, the software, etc., then you're going to deal with that. If the issue relates to a broker related, then obviously I'm I'm assuming you're going to liaise with the broker on behalf of the customer and and resolve it. Uh, so we have a deep integration with our broker um, and. Uh, uh, we are doing this triage, as you described in customer support. We take care of customer support. We reply as fast as we can to all our uh, beloved uh, users. And uh, as soon as the problem is not on our side, we make sure that we patch them, we patch the problem and we have a SLA. So, you know, we have a response times that we have agreed on with our broker to allow the service to be reliable, of course. Gotcha. No, that's cool. Okay. And I, I guess like completely switching the the uh the topic a little bit but um but it's something i'm interested in i'm sorry i've got so many questions but i i, I find it really oh, that's cool i mean i love it guys... and uh, again thank you i mean it's it's so it's so nice that you guys are interested in our, our services oh, cool. so um, please go ahead yeah as i say i mean obviously you guys are europe only at the moment which makes complete sense um because you're not just going to try and dominate the world immediately from the beginning uh, and you may not even want to at all uh, but i suppose when it comes into expansion of countries i mean obviously things like the regulations surrounding kyc and stuff like that is probably mm -hmm. going to hold you back in in, in various territories in usa yes. is one brazil is one yes but like what um what what it what is your kind of i suppose if you if you're, if you're talking idea the, the general idea i understand what that is what is your like roadmap are you looking to kind of are you guys prioritizing kind of creating more services surrounding your your goal model or are you more prioritizing expansion into other territories would you say i guess is the question I'm, I'm uh, i would i would say that our priority is um, is definitely the one of uh, rolling out the same service to uh, multiple territories more than what than what we cover today uh, but we know that as you said in some of them will never be able to roll out the service as is you know because as you said maybe those territory have other requirements and we leave uh, those type of challenges for a phase of the startup where we're going to be a little bit more mature because one thing you need to know i mean we launched the product in december uh, past year so we are only on, we are only live since uh, uh, what uh, four months in April? Yeah, four months in April. Let's say or three months to three full complete months to say, to say it this way. So to be honest, I, those type of expansion, changing the feature, enriching the product, adding other services that requires more backup, that requires more resources. Today again, it's just uh, two people. Uh, so it's uh, uh, it, for sure we need uh, we need investment in that sense. But we don't. At the same time, that's a very interesting topic. I'm not sure we want to get hooked up. Let's say in in um, very strong investment. So we if we found if we find an investor, it has to be also uh, an investor on the on the you know on the mission of the company, not just the you know not just capital. You know, it has to be also. Uh, knowledge it has to be aligned with our values otherwise we would not go for it because again we are not we are doing it for the for the passion we're not doing it uh, you know uh, for any other specific reason so yeah i don't know if i was able to reply to your question and then of course there are some other ideas that we have on completely different type of services for instance more uh, b2b to to companies not uh, so we we we, we thought uh, that's maybe a service that we're gonna uh, that we're gonna work on. We thought that it would be super interesting to help companies actually uh, do. Of course, we would do that operating with a different brand, operating with a different set of services. But a lot of companies are interested in storing value in this way um, as an investment, but they do not have the internal competencies to do it. So you know that's something that we could provide as a service. Where is that? How do you feel that company is going to be looking to buy, you know, a Bitcoin for one thousand euros a day? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 but wait, no, no, but with a different model, of course. No, no, with a, no, no, you're right, you're right. No, no, of course, of course, but with a totally different model, I would say yes. So we, we then we're gonna basically just being uh, consulting, you know, we're just gonna consult them 
you know. Of course, with Valga Bibit Keep, it's a totally different story. Yeah. It's like almost a separate project. Let's say. Since the app is so new, what's the response been like from, from your users? Uh, uh, we love it. I mean, uh, we are very satisfied. It has been a lot of uh, uh, hard work, really a lot. Like we spent a uh, uh, lot of time, as I said, perfecting the solution. But so far, the, the impact has been pretty good. But you're also going to tell me if it's good or not. Uh, the KPIs are, uh, today we have around, uh, I think, something like uh, 500 uh, active users, which is, which is really good. Uh, and also, I mean, what we like the most uh, is the fact that we have... Uh, uh, an active community um, uh, that everyone can join. Uh, but also, I mean, I would say when we have likes in the stores, you know, in the Play Store, and these are genuine likes with comments uh, from the user, like that's a really good service. And there's honestly nothing uh, that repays you, <laughs> that repays you more uh, of these genuine comments. But I mean, I, I know that. Uh, Quantitative, quantitative wise, uh, this is not the same thing as having, I don't know, 1 million users, but still a genuine comment on the stores is something we, we love. Yes. So, yeah, so far the feedback is, is positive in the user community. We have a lot of questions around UK. We have a lot of questions as I, uh, around KYC, so even more, uh, going beyond the, the thresholds. As all, basically, some of the questions that you have asked are the same of our users. And uh, again, as far as I'm going to be there, the roadmap of our product is going to be influenced by our users. So probably we are going to we are going to we are going to be working on on those things in the future. You, I, I think you, when you also consider that it solves you know very unique you know problem, and I think that with unique Solving solving unique problems comes its own unique, you know, challenge. So, what are the challenges that you, you, know, you face in the in the you know in the mission? In the mission, it was uh, the it was. Uh... I mean, we had a uh, few times we thought we were not gonna make. It. I mean, dur during the during the mission, it's been it's been crazy. First of all, in order to be you know a legal entity, in order to be incorporated as a company, you need to have support of uh, local authorities. You need to have support of uh, of some uh, financial institutions. So that is one, I would say, if not the obstacle uh, in the creation of uh, of such a project, because you need to spend a lot of time explaining details in very details what you're doing uh, you know so that's a big challenge it took us almost uh, the same amount of time to build the entire product from a from a from a technical standpoint let's say than to uh, be authorized to uh, you know uh, put it out there let's say so it's a, it's a very uh, complex procedure one second challenge of course there's been a lot of focus for us on the on the usability of the application. So, of course, at the beginning, we didn't have any uh, um, any user, you know, to ask to. We only had uh, my feeling and the feeling of the co-founder, Alessandro. So we thought, okay, what are we going to do? Uh, uh, are we optimizing in the right direction? Are we going in the right direction? It's been very difficult to work a little bit, let's say, in a box like that. And that's when we have uh, Alessandro decided, okay, let's open a beta uh, chat beta group on telegram and we and and the, and the beta users have been have been great i mean uh, i love them all and they have uh, they helped us a lot shaping the product so that's why we believe a lot on you know making sure you know uh, that we keep the user at the center of what we do so that's a little bit the challenges so i would say to recap uh, regulation, uh, being able to put in place uh, something, you know, official, uh, the technical development, uh, the usability of the solution, and then, yeah, simply the effort, yes, the effort that it takes. Is this um, still a side gig for you guys, or is it becoming or become the, the full-time? Uh, that's another very interesting uh, question. So uh, I wouldn't even define it as a side gig. Today, we are almost uh, not able to generate uh, a decent uh, uh, inflow of, uh, of to you know to to be able to sustain uh, even the investment because we are still in that phase that's uh, that's that's kind of normal uh, but uh, but for sure uh, tomorrow if the company develops then uh, we are ready to, to you know to 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 do even more that that's not a problem but of course i have to be honest with you we are uh, clearly observing Still, we are in an observing phase. We need to see how the, the user adoption uh, goes 
from now until uh, I would say end of this year. At the end of this year, I think we're going to say, okay, uh, do we need an external investor uh, or maybe earlier if the opportunity presents? So how can we scale up in order for this to become our, you know, our, um, our, our day-to-day, -day, yeah. our everything. Gotcha. No, cheers. I am. Um, I I'm. I think I've got a complete answer. I think I've we've grilled you pretty pretty good. But um, have you guys got any other questions you want to ask? Because I'm 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 out now. Like I've pretty much just <laughs> attacked. Uh, yeah, this isn't actually related to Bitkippy, but um, what's your opinion on the recent controversy with Wasabi Wallet uh, being forced to kind of take a more serious effort towards compliance? Um, employ like chain analysis and possibly blacklist certain wallets from participating yeah i heard about it i mean uh, um to be honest uh, do i do i have a, a a strong opinion on that uh i don't know it's it's on a way uh, in a way uh, ah alessandro is here alessandro can you hear hello us? guys hello uh, welcome the... gate, gate crashing <laughs> Hey, Alessandro. You know, you know what's gonna happen now, Alessandro. You're gonna reply to this. You're gonna reply to the last question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, Alessandro. Um, nice the to question meet you too. I just asked Enrico. Uh, it doesn't really have to do with Bitkeepy, but I'm curious because you guys are kind of in an area where um, regulations don't really affect Bitkeepy. And Wasabi Wallet was in a similar position, and they recently had a controversy with the. Um, Dow hacker article that Laura Shin wrote, and now they're being uh, more serious about compliance, and they're going to employ chain analysis and possibly blacklist participants for coin joins. And I was just wondering if you guys had any opinion on that. Yeah, so I think this doesn't really affect us because basically we are not like a, a financial institution, or like a regulated financial institution, so we don't have to comply to these kind of of things. Our broker probably does, but I don't think uh, they, they got any pressure in that direction for the moment, because I think Wasabi is kind of a different thing. So basically they probably got some pressure because of the, you know, the anti-money laundering thing. So, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. coin joining is supposedly seen by probably governments and regulators as a, like a way to launder money. And, uh, but I, I don't think this does affect like uh, the normal exchange uh, fiat to Bitcoin. But it's true Another... that those controversies are like, uh are the bread and butter of uh, of the industry as well so uh, you know you never know what's behind the corner at the same time i think that uh, more broadly i think more broadly that uh, uh, you know those kind of problem are always gonna be there as long as the technology is not so widely adopted uh, to to basically uh, you know get, get over this type of uh, of discussions and it is exactly the spirit of BTP is to make the technology uh, wi wi very widely adopted. Yeah. Alessandro, uh, sorry. Um, before you came, I did ask um, Enrico if he supports free market and basically he you know that was up for debate. So I'm going to throw the same question to you. And that was, you know, do you support you know free markets? And before you answer that, I'll ask a follow up question. And assuming if you do support free market, which I think you do, you know, considering you know the whole nature of your product, you know, um, do you think that because Enrico said that as long as he is in the company, that uh, we keep the world Bitcoin only? Um, assuming that, um, so I'm going through the question. You know, if customers come demanding, say, hey, we want to buy Ethereum, we want to you know dabble into NFTs, give us Ethereum to you know DCA, would you let them have it? Because considering that it's their choice. And do you share the same sentiment with um, Enrico, which is that as long as, you know, you, you, you guys are not going to support, you know, any other, you know, assets? Yeah, so I mean, so basically we, we are like a Bitcoin only company and uh, I, 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 I've been into Bitcoin for several years now and I, I don't really think there is like value in other things. So I don't really care about the rest and we don't want to focus on the rest. Also, because I think it's quite misleading for people, you know, like uh, I remember my dad and he was, getting into bitcoin at some point and he was confused by all the other coins what is this ethereum what is this what is that and then it's really really hard for you know for newbies to to kind of get their head around uh, this mm. crypto thing so i try to you know always pass pass on the message that it's not crypto it's bitcoin so all the rest i mean it doesn't really matter <laughs> 
Uh, uh, that's that's my my that's so my we point. are aligned. <laughs> but the question is smart because it's very smart because in a way you could see uh, the market of crypto as a as a free market that you could say okay there is supply and demand and uh, why should we? In fact, we are not attention. We are not uh, blocking people from buying other cryptocurrencies, just not on our platform. You know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so, so for me, uh, it's uh, that's the be- that's probably the best answer. Yeah. Uh, I had a question for you both. Uh, what are your roles? I know it's just the two of you, but Alessandro, your role is what at BKP, and Enrico, what is your role? Enrico, you go first. I go first. Okay. So um, basically, uh, we are both uh, co founder That's how our, we present uh, ourselves. But uh, clearly, uh, uh, Alessandro is, uh, uh, is um, uh, the technical uh, mind behind uh, everything. And uh, I am the, uh, the uh, humble uh, operational arm, I would say. No, I'm a sort okay. of uh, uh, CEO, CEO, CEO operation, operation, overseeing operations, let's say. And uh, we, co- we jointly take care of marketing, which uh, in this industry is a bitch, to be honest, is difficult really to uh, sorry for the language i'm not sure i, I can use this those words but it's a it's a, it's, a, it. it's it's okay. it's a difficult it's a difficult uh, it's a difficult uh, market um, where uh, where to be a marketer let's say because uh, to be honest the audiences are very difficult and we we had a lot of uh, uh, problem in um, in making our solution known, of course, because the solution is there. It's good. We have a good mar- feedback from the users, but getting getting uh, known is difficult. That's why we love to discuss in first person with uh, with people like you guys. Uh, I know you guys are both Italians that are living yeah. in Switzerland, but how close are you guys to the Italian Bitcoin community and specifically the Bitcoin? Uh, Valley in Rovereto. That's for Alessandro. Yeah, so uh, if I have to be honest, I've never been in Rovereto, so I don't. Know, I know that there is like a like a huge community in there, but I'm not really into that uh, that kind of region in Italy. Uh, I, I'm I'm in close contact with Giacomo Zucco, who is probably the most you know famous uh, uh, Italian Bitcoiner all over the world. And he actually gave me like, a, we had like quite a lot of calls uh, while I was building BitKeepy and kind of helping out, uh, trying to get him, get you up to the right, uh, you know, path. Also in terms of communication, in terms of, in terms of messages that we wanted to kind of transmit to the users. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we are, there is like a huge Telegram group uh, with a lot of Bitcoiners in Italy, we are always hanging in there. And it's quite uh, like a vibrant, uh, I would say, uh, community in Italy about yes. this one, yeah. Uh, well, I guess, has anyone got any more questions? Or Because I say, if not, we're come, we've come to a sort of goodish time anyway. Uh, yeah, no, I think I'm good with questions. We I've asked a bunch. <laughs> yeah, so we have basically grilled Enrico for the last sort of uh, 40 minutes. At I'm least, there so. for this reason. So. <laughs> That's no cool. problem. What's well, the, re- the real reason yeah. why Alessandro showed up at the end. <laughs> yeah, he avoided, he avoided all that and got the, nice, the nicer questions. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been awesome to have both of you on. We really appreciate it. And uh, is there anything you want to like sort of say or, or plug before we head out? No, I mean, just a very, very big thank you. I mean, uh, for us to be able to speak about our passion and our product is uh, it's just uh, the best thing that can happen. So just a very, very big thank you to, to you for taking the time and for having us. Uh, my last question was, is it yes. available on iOS or only Android? Uh, both, yes. I, iOS and uh, Android at the moment. Um, yeah, what can users expect from BTP in the next you know, six, seven, eight months? What's, what's next for you guys? What's, what's, on the, what's next on the rollout? You want to take it, Sandra? Yeah. Otherwise, I can. Uh, yeah, sure, it. sure. Yeah, so basically now we're working on a referral program to kind of incentivize a little bit the adoption. So basically you get like, uh, we will probably need to raise a little bit the fees, uh, but we will also give an incentive to people to kind of share, you know, like a referral code and get a discount on fees and also get like a cashback uh, in, in Satoshi if you basically introduce new people. So that's uh, basically what we are currently working on. And I think we will be ready like with a better release. We have like a, like a closed, Telegram group with like uh, I think like forty or fifty people, always happy to test our our new versions of the application. So I think in a couple of weeks we will release this, and probably in a month or a month and a half we will ship the new version to the stores. 
And uh, so we think and we hope that this will probably, we at least, you know, drive a little bit more the adoption of the application. Yeah. And also expand a little bit uh, uh, also across Europe, because uh, I think majority of our users now, they are coming from Italy, because of course, I mean, we are Italian, so we are kind of a little bit more into the Italian community, but the application is available available pretty much everywhere in Europe. So we really hope yeah. to get some new people from yeah. the outside. And yes, so big, uh, big next thing, uh, referral program in uh, absolutely yeah. in the in the time horizon that you have described. Jerry. All right, well, um, cheers. That's actually a pretty good way to go out tell people, you know, the plans for the for the future. Yes. I like the question, Jerry. Um, well, yeah, thanks, guys, for coming on. It's been appreciated. And, and thanks. Um, thanks for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, I hope that everyone who's listening has got a good understanding now, but Kippy, and if you're in Europe, go ahead and try it out uh, if you can and uh, have an awesome day, week, month, year. Take care. <laughs> keep loving life. Uh, goodbye from all of us and keep buying Bitcoin. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.